I've got a massive problem because I've got 33 miles more to go of the West Highland Way. And my foot looks like this. I'm about 65 miles into one of the most popular backpacking trails in Scotland and I've just woken up feeling rather grumpy because this trip has not been going according to plan. Uh, that is an absolutely massive fluid filled blister. It started forming on day two of this trip because I walked the first two days with completely wet socks. Um, it was a fraction of that size at the start of yesterday. And I can't, I cannot walk in that. I'm gonna have to drain it. Let's see what we got in the old medical bag. A sharp pointy object with which to stab Bobby the blister. Cleansing wipe. Use it on Sir Lancelot here. So Sir Lancelot does not become Sir. Introduce infection a lot. And the way I've done this in the past is I just put my finger on one side of it to force all the fluid up to this side and then just stick the pin in which doesn't hurt by the way let's wiggle that around a bit the needle tears the hole the old familiar pain oh that oh that's very sensitive that skin now ah I think that's because it's ripping up into more sensitive skin. Down here my foot's quite, quite a thick skin, but up here it's very, very, ah! There's no point putting a blister plaster on it at this point because, well, we're well, be we're well beyond that. Whereas hopefully this will just, just protect it. My freshest socks, I say freshest because they're not 100% fresh and they're not 100% dry, but they're the best of the options I have. I'm not looking forward to putting on this shoe. Mm. <laughs> Ooh, this is going to be a fun day. Look at that light. It's beautiful, isn't it? And it's roughly going in the direction I need to go. My next stop, unless I go to the hotel, which is down there and I might try that because um, after that, there's nothing for nearly 10 miles until I get to Glencoe. Last night was actually quite a bit windier than I was expecting it was gonna be. Proper gusts came through, woke me up a couple of times during the night. Well, that's a bit disappointing, the Inverarran Hotel will not serve me breakfast, will not let me use the toilet. I mean, I suppose it does make sense. I've ended up finishing this over a bank holiday weekend, which is exactly something I didn't want to do. It means that places are gonna be really busy today and tomorrow. So I'm just going to make do without, without getting a warm breakfast. They're just wild camping in this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 tents all crammed into relative, oh, 17. There's another one down there. You know what, I'm just gonna have a moan. I spent the first two days of this trip soaked walking in rain for hours and hours and hours. And now today, I'm starting out, and my foot is starting to feel like it's burning. And because I'm changing how I'm walking, I'm now starting to get pain up the left side of my shin. So every step I've taken hurts. If I'm honest, I'm not enjoying this today. And I hate, absolutely hate that I'm saying that, because I was looking forward to this trip for a long time and for such a large percentage of it to be unpleasant it's just i'm looking forward to whatever it is is going to cheer me up today but for now for now i am being grumpy and not enjoying myself
Shut up, birds. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it, birdies. Your singing is actually quite nice. And it's cheering me up a little bit. I just remembered. I have, I have a Snickers. I bought a Snickers Duo yesterday. I only ate one half of it. Oh, and look at this. Things are looking up. Ice cold drinks. Bet you this is empty. It's actually not empty. And they've got Fanta. This day has just hugely improved. <laughs> I actually can't believe that in the space of 20 seconds, I remember I had a Snickers bar and I managed to get two cans of Fanta. I told you something was gonna cheer me up. Well, what's going on here? Look, these lads, they're still trying to build the road, but you've got a farmer here trying to drive his animals down it. And then these idiots on the cart back here, I mean, what, are they literally just like standing there for an entire day as they build a bit of railroad? <laughs> By the time this guy got his animals to market, they'd have all died of old age. <laughs> this road is much nicer to walk on than anything I've been on since. It's made of like nice rounded smooth stones. So thank you dead guy back there. Would you look at that, the sun has come out, the rain has stopped, and I even managed to go to the bank and make a deposit, although while I was uh, making the deposit, the midges found me and bit me on my bank vault. Pro tip, don't scratch midge bites, just rub them if you scratch them. It, they, if they scratch them, they itch for much longer and form scabs, whereas if you rub them, they only itch for a short period of time. Ooh. No matter how itchy or where they may be. I'm currently getting tips on Instagram uh, from podiatrist. Turns out one of my followers is a foot doctor. This is why I love the internet. So thanks, Sheila. But I've uh, come into this forest, which is actually quite nice because it's really sheltered. I'm currently debating putting my tent up in here and chilling for a couple of hours because if the forecast is accurate, it's going to be rainy and miserable for the next couple of hours and then it will dry off. Um, and at my current pace, I'm going to be arriving at Glencoe uh, Ski, Ski Resort right at their prime lunchtime. Uh, so it could be quite busy, whereas if I delay, I'll get there later in the afternoon. And that means I've got a better chance of getting food because I think I'm going to do a shorter day today. I think that's going to be the, my best option. Shorter day today, and then try and do the last 25 miles tomorrow in one long, painful go. <laughs> Here's what I've done. I've got my tent set up. I've got one, two, three, four citronella candles sitting around outside. And on the inside, another candle. And I've got my mat inflated. I've got my pillow out. And I've got my sleeping bag. Looks like pasta's back in the menu, boys. Well, 
it's two hours later and it's still raining outside but I have managed to fully charge this camera which means I can continue talking to you today with it's still gonna rain I can't use the other camera and I slept for an hour so I feel a lot better about the prospect of trekking in the rain just wanted to show you this this is just the expert tent with the inner removed and you can still sit in it like a shelter this is one of the reasons I love this this tent. It's just so versatile. I could potentially just carry this outer with me if I'm out for a day. And if it rains, pitch it up, get inside. There's enough space in here for two, maybe three people to sit comfortably and have lunch or have a break. And I've also been able to put my contact lenses in um, so I can actually see when it's raining. Glasses and rain, being in my existence, I hate, hate, hate. The fact that I wear glasses and if someday I can afford laser eye surgery to fix my eyes, I will be rapidly doing so. Actually, it has stopped raining. <laughs> Finally, Glencoe is hoving into view, and it is magnificent. It'd be more magnificent if it wasn't covered in low clouds, which it is quite a lot of the time. <laughs> Although I do have some footage of it, not coated in low clouds, and I might just put that into the video from a different time. But also impressive is like the vast, vast wilderness of Rannochmoor out there as well. It just goes on and on and on and on. The Glencoe Ski Resort, which is just over there, beyond those trees, and there's the King's House Hotel, which is down that way. Uh, both of those, there's a bar at the King's House where you can get food, uh, but there's also a cafe up at the, the ski resort. Now, because it's a bank holiday, here's my reckoning. I'm going to go to the ski resort first of all, try and get lunch there, and then I'm going to head down to the King's House and try and see if I can find somewhere to wild camp. I've heard you can wild camp down there. Um, there's also showers. I think you can pay a pound and use the showers. I think I've got one pound coin left, possibly. After managing to keep my left and blistered foot dry for all of today, I just slipped and stepped in a small puddle and now my, my blistered foot is wet. <laughs> I want it to keep water off it because it now has a hole in it. So if I step in water, which walkers and dogs have all been going through all day for several days, it's probably an absolute bacterial soup, which is the worst type of soup. Ooh, I wonder if they'll have soup here. Before we continue, I'd just like to thank my sponsors, Pure Clear Water Filters, who make excellent small filters that remove a lot more nasties than most other filters of the same size, and they make the water taste a lot better than a normal fiber filter. Sunto, who for this trip supplied me with their new race sports watch, which has instantly become my new favorite adventure watch, and also their wing bone conducting headphones, which I used for hours every single day. Exped, who make a ton of great camping gear, and in this trip I used one of their fantastically comfortable inflatable mats, pillow, and extremely cosy ultralight sleeping bags. There's a kit list in the description, now let's get back to the adventure. Goodbye Glencoe Ski Centre, thanks for lunch, I had a rather tasty lunch. Ordered myself two massive baked potatoes. I got all my kit charged up as well. Good to go for the next 24 hours. And then also using the charger sockets was um, a retired German history and English teacher. Not a German teacher, she actually was German. That was her nationality. We got talking and we discussed the political situation in Northern Ireland. And then I recommended a podcast. Turns out she's got a son who's two years older than me and a daughter who's the same age as me didn't catch your name but she's now a subscriber so if you're watching hi and uh, i leave a comment but i am now heading down oh, i can't see it now to king's house where i've been told i can hopefully find somewhere to wild camp for the night and more importantly they've got showers
Well, guess where I'm staying tonight. See that hotel? Well, you see the bunch of trees behind the hotel and I'm standing there in the tent. As you can probably see, it's sometime later. It's raining again. It's been raining nearly since I got here, but thankfully it's the stop overnight. I was pretty tired when I got here. Basically pitched my tent, had rest, and then went over to the to the bar to get some food and charge my kit up. Sat and chatted to some people, and now I'm about to go to bed. Um, oh, I also had a shower and I'm now quite worried about my foot. Um, my left foot, the one with the blister, is... It's definitely slightly swollen and it's red. And that is after only doing 10 miles on it today, so I'm a bit worried about that. So... I think you might want to get that squeak looked at. I've been resting it all evening and... Just gonna have to see how it goes tomorrow. Just the whole lower part of my leg feels weird. I think because I've been trying to compensate for the blister, I've been walking differently, and it's giving me a weird pain. So I'm really worried about how tomorrow's gonna go. But I mean, I'm gonna have my tent with me tomorrow. So worst case scenario, I can camp again. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this video for here. If you want to find out how I deal with the last 25 miles of the West Highland Way, you can uh, watch tomorrow's video, where I will also be telling you the story about the worst betrayal in Scottish history, the Glencoe Massacre. And as you go closer to investigate, you realize it's a person curled up in the snow, slowly freezing to death in the same clothes that they went to bed in that night. And as you stood there for longer and you listened, you then became aware perhaps of gunfire and screaming coming from the glen below. And also what you might realize is that pretty much this entire structure, with the exception of its stone foundations, is incredibly flammable. I just found this little guy walking along the trail, barely moving. 